Oh, I've got another mega mailbag. When will it end? How do you get this? Mm. Oh. <sighs> it's more lore modules. I know it's something differently this time. Four more of these. These are 868T20Ds. I've shown these multiple times before. There we go. E byte E32 modules. Very easy to use. Highly recommend them. Check my links down, down below for you to get them. Use my links. The size of this thing. It's a octopus cable. I think it literally is actually. Two, four, six, yep, yeah, eight. It is actually an octopus cable. So these are 2.1mm DC jacks. This is for splitting off a charger so I can charge multiple devices at once. I did show one previously which had a four on it. Quadruped, I don't know, uh, quadrup something. So, <laughs> quadrup connector. Maybe it was. It had four. So this one's got eight. Jet links. And it's more hardware. Strange, I thought I'd received everything. Hmm, just some little nuts and bolts. I think these are 2mm. That's sound the front there if I can get to focus. There we go. M2 by 12. I didn't have any small hardware. So when I was building this stuff for this project, I needed to mount displays and displays. Mounting holes were not 3mm, they are 2.5mm. So I had to draw the holes out and things like that. So I wasn't happy about doing that. I wanted to get some better hardware. So I needed some smaller hardware and I didn't have anything. So I've got a whole bunch of them now. I think I've gone overboard again. That never happens. I don't know what's going on. I never go overboard normally. A couple of right angled connectors. So I showed some similar ones previously. The ones I showed previously were left hand connections. These are right hand. So obviously when it's in this direction it will go either that way or that way, right? So the one I got before went the other way. They didn't actually quite fit the device I intended. There's a rear foot and it was in the way I did show it at the time. So this is the right hand version which is the job instead. It means the cable goes back the wrong direction but I'm going to slip it around. This saves a bit of bench space because it stops the equipment sticking out so far on the shelf there. I showed that before. I'll have to show it again. Switches. I actually ran out of toggle switches. I've I've always had toggle switches for decades. I've always had them. It's a really handy things you now, using little projects and that sort of stuff. So these are some single pole, single throw. Bought a few different versions from the same supplier. Let's get this focus. Single pole, double throw. And what else have we got here? These are single pole, double throw as well. Same. These are double pole, double throw. And these are some other ones. Single pole, double throw again. Some more toggle switches. What do I do all at once? These ones are slightly smaller. These are micros. I think those are mini toggles and these are micro toggles. And these are also single pole double throw. But these have got the smaller bodies on them. Sometimes you can't fit one of these other ones in there. You have to, you know, squeeze in something smaller. And these are quite good. These are very handy to have. They also take up less space in storage. Check out my parts bin too. Mypartsbin.com. In case you didn't know about it. It's my parts storage inventory site. It's free. You can download it from right your own server. Dave mentioned it too. I sent them something not long ago. And we've got some more angle connectors. These ones are up themselves. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, these ones get upwards. These are vertical ones. Again, gives different options. So I did have a whole bunch of these already, and I can't find them. They're just like gone. And I've used some, I know if you, I've used them on some of my gear here, but I know I had more left over. Can't find them. So I had to hop by a selection again, so I've got a selection to use when I need to try and get my test gear to sit further back on my shelf. Anyway, I've got a few things here I need to shift around. Don't forget to check out my merch. I've got cups and all sorts. Cups, shirts, singlets, might even be socks. Just all sorts of stuff. Different colours, different designs. Right, these are what I've been waiting for. ESP32s, five of those. Now these are the dev kit version one. And they've got a different pin out to the ones I've been getting before. So I'll show you. Now the packet's gonna make these slightly blurry. Well, there's my camera technique. But that pin there is 3.3 volts in this ground. And up here, you have pin 23, I think it is. Yeah, anyway, you can't see through the packet. I think this is 23. So these are what I've been using my project, this particular one, because they're fairly small. All the pins that you need are broken out. There's pins on some of the other modules are broken out, which you can't use anyway, because they use sort of flash and things like that. So you shouldn't use them, and this makes them bigger. So this is what I've been using is these things. So um, I think I actually need to get more. I'm not sure I've got enough. I think I might have 10 more coming. I'm not sure, anyway. Yeah, some might. Ah, oh, right. 
you're gonna wonder what the heck these are. These are black glue sticks. That's right, black glue sticks. There we go. Now these are actually purchased with the intent of something I showed previously in a mailbag a little while ago now, a couple of months ago probably. Well, probably three months ago by the time we see this one. Body repair, like dent repair kit. I had a dent pull repair thing. These little tabs you stick onto the bodywork of the car and you pull them with a little pulling mechanism thing. It didn't come with any kind of adhesive. It turns out this is what you use, is these glue sticks. So I bought a bunch of these. Now the other advantage is being black glue sticks means you could use these in other things. You could probably use them in projects, things like that, where you need to attach something, but the normal glue sticks, which look ugly because they're translucent and they can look bad. I thought some of these might actually look okay to holding things and you know, maybe fill gaps that kind of thing whereas a translucent one shows up. So I thought it might be, have multiple purposes. That's why I've got so much of it. Fittings for these, I think. Probably will be. Now this one here is, well, it's practically open already. This is how it came. I was actually amazed because, you know, this could like just fall out. Um, yeah. I hope they're okay. Obviously it's had a hard time on the way here. The bubbles seem okay, but some have popped. Obviously it's got caught in a bit of machinery or something. Maybe in the sorting centre it's been caught. It's pinched this side as well. Let's see. Just have a feel. It feels intact. This one's been pinched. Such a damage the plastic here. Packaging. I think it's probably okay. Feels about the same. That feels alright. Feels okay too, so I think they've probably survived. Now what these are, obviously, are Brother tapes. But they like Brother label printers, so I've got some different ones. I've got this gold on black laminated one, I thought that looked quite interesting. There's a white on clear, black on clear, and white on black. So this particular seller had a whole bunch of different versions and different colours and transparent, non-transparent. Bit of a change from the typical white on black or, you know, the typical ones we might use. So I thought I'd get these and have a look. But this one here looks, in particular, quite promising. Black on gold looks pretty cool. Well, gold on black, which way you want to see it. You'll see how those go. Obviously, aftermarket things. These are not that expensive. Only, I think, about $5 each, something like that, Which is certainly a lot cheaper than the official ones. Still got a few items to go, so don't go away just yet. Got a couple of big packages yet. Let's see what's in those. What's this? Ah, right, feet. Rubber feet. So I noticed I was getting a bit low on feet, so I got some more. So stick on feet. It's got three adhesive apparently. How many's in there? 10, 20, 30, 40. It's actually me for a while. I've been using them for my project. For the modules I've been building, there's boxes, which I've shown them. Obviously, there's feet on the bottom of them. And I have to build probably six standalone modules, uh, plus other, yes, yeah, so that's 12 modules, plus receivers, gateway modules. So yeah, I probably need about 15 boxes all up with feet on. So that's 60 odd. But there's 14 on here, so it's still not enough. But I've already got some. And another thing for the project. So I've shown previously very similar cables. They look basically identical. Same brand, everything. These ones are one meter long. So you've got this little right angle TRS cable and a straight one here. Braided leads. Um, they've lasted okay so far. So it's been alright and it's had a bit of abuse and be yanked a few times, that kind of thing. It's still survived. So these ones are slightly longer, which is why I got these because I don't want to keep getting yanked because the other one's a bit short. So I've got some longer ones. So I've only got four, five. I've got five. I thought that'd probably be enough. I might get some more actually, so I'll need about six of these things, plus some spares, so I'll probably get a couple more. And here's some more ESP32s, there should be ten in there I'm guessing. One, two, four, eight, ten of them. So exactly the same as the other one, the dev kit version one modules, so perfect, I've now got enough. I think. Only 12, only 15. Yeah, barely enough. I've got exactly the right number. So I haven't got any spares. That's always concerning. And the last thing. Thanks for sticking around to the very end. It helps the channel. The more you watch of the videos, the longer you watch for, the better it is as far as YouTube's concerned. I think the video is a bit better. So if you can watch more or just leave it playing, whatever, it helps me quite a bit on the channel. It helps push it a bit more with YouTube. And thanks if you want to subscribe. If you're not subscribed already, make sure you click the bell icon. Very important to click that bell, otherwise you don't get notified. What the hell are these? Big Tree Tech. Uh, okay, right. Oh, a ducky. Oh, cool. <clears throat> Simple things for these different wines. I've got some heat sinks. There's four in there. And we have a upgrade board. This is for my Ender 3. 
I was going to try upgrading the main board to see if it can um, just help it. Now, apparently this helps to make it quieter. Which version is what's in here? This is supposed to be that sort of display module stuff. I'm now confused. Okay, there's the drivers on there. All the drivers are built into the board on this one. And you see them down there, much like the original board. And that's why the heat sinks are in here. What's in here? This must, must be a display. I don't remember what I purchased now because this is well, a little while ago now and I bought this. A couple of months ago. Took a little while to arrive. So we have a knob, have a couple of cables. One's IDC, one's in line. And we have a new display unit, so a TFT display. I think it's touchscreen. Yeah, it looks like it's touchscreen as well. You can't even sit on looking at it, can you? So it's got the flex on there, so it looks like it's a touchscreen. Is this a touchscreen? I really don't remember. I just saw the thing there. I thought I could upgrade the end to three. I was doing a bit of printing it with it at the time, and I was thinking, eh, I suppose I could make it better. Try chucking a new main board in there and see if it works any better. I mean, it works okay, but there's always room for improvement and everything. Um, these modules were Fairly inexpensive actually. You've got a big touch screen display and all that module there and no instructions because that's always helpful. I guess it's online somewhere. We'll get the main module out. Yeah, let's get the main module out too. Close look at this too. And it's upside down. You focus. And there. So this looks rather different. X stop, Y stop, Z stop, THB, fan, fan, PTDE, servos, TFT, probe, East zero stop, Neo Pixel. Programming here though looks like. X, Y, Z, and E. Those are the various things. Oh look, it's got a SD card poking out of it. Okay, wonder what's on that. Maybe it's got some manuals and stuff on it. And it's got some MOSFETs down there. So obviously I've got to put those little heat sinks on these drivers, which are the drivers for the stepper motors. Come on, focus. These are supposed to be slightly quieter than the original ones, apparently. It's, they're recommended upgrades. If you look at these 3D printing channels, you know, this is logical like modules considered to be an upgrade for it. So it makes it a bit quieter and a bit faster, apparently. Yeah, we'll give it a go. We'll see how we go with it. I'll probably do a video on upgrade, actually. Seeing if I can mess it up or not. <laughs> Who knows? Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon, share the video if anyone might be interested in it. And thanks everyone for the support of the channel. You know, everyone that watches the channel helps. And you know, I'm hoping that now I've reached 10,000 subs, it will go a little bit faster and progress a bit better. There's been channels which I've been neck and neck with for a long time since we started. You know, I started around the same kind of time. And some of them have taken off and gone and, and left me behind, which is interesting. As during last year, when I had a lull, my channel just dived. And then it's come back again now and it's performing as it should be again. But for a while there, the channel was struggling. I don't know why it did it. And during that period of time, other channels took off and mine do dropped, which is really weird. Even though they've got the same kind of content like Vault Log, where I Florin, I know you watch my channel. Vault Log's channel, for example, if you haven't seen him, go and check him out. Um, he does mailbag videos. He does some quite interesting stuff too, you know, in that regard. You know, a lot of detail in the mailbag videos, things he does. But other repair channels too. Anyway, I'm waffling. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later. Yeah, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget that.